The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Karen. You might remember me from the learning circuit. Well, this is my inaugural project here on Element 14 Presents, and I am super excited. So in today's episode, I am going to be making an escape room puzzle. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, I am a huge fan of escape rooms. Uh, for those of you not familiar, you go there, you pay a bunch of money, you have a team of people that go in with you, frequently anywhere between two, uh, but more commonly like four up until like eight, sometimes even like 15 people with you. Uh, you have one hour to solve all of the puzzles, unlatch all of the things, find all of the keys, solve all of the problems, uh, and escape. Um, they're usually themed, uh, and so that's extra fun. Um, so for my puzzle, um, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do, but the, uh, as far as theme, but for the, the mechanism, I want to have a box that has an electronically controlled latch and I want to find uh, multiple objects that you have to place. And if you place the correct objects on the correct spaces, then the box will unlatch. So let's see what I can come up with. After some research, I settled on a pretty simple circuit. Three 54630 read switches will be placed in series and connected to the coil of a G5V-1 series relay. When magnets are placed near each reed switch, causing them to all engage, the relay will switch, activating a solenoid that will open the box. The circuit runs on a 9-volt power supply. And since I need a little more pull, I went with a 6-volt solenoid rather than a 9-volt one. Gives me a little more oomph. The diodes on the coils help prevent big voltage spikes from happening when the power is disconnected. For inspiration for my puzzle, I went to my favorite place to get cheap junk, dig and save, because how can you beat 35 cents a pound? Well, in one of the bins, there were all of these Pokemon EV evolutions, and also this Pokeball. So I think these are going to be the key to my puzzle. So I think I need to pick three of them and then rip open their bellies and shove magnets in there so they can be used to set off the read switches, which are going to be the activation point of my puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> The rate switches need to be concealed, but be as close to the surface as possible so that the magnets can easily trigger them. So I'm routing out a channel in a 1x4 piece of wood deep enough to fit the reed switches, then cutting down some 3mm MDF to match and using that to cover the switches. I only routed through one end of the 1x4. This way one end is closed off, but the other has a nice gap for the wires to come out. Okay, so I have breadboarded my circuit, I have my reed switches test set up under this mat, and I have gutted my Pokemon and stuck magnets in their bellies. So let's see if my solenoid works. Turn my power on, and a one Pokemon, and a two Pokemon, and a three Pokemon. Oh, yeah! Okay. Yeah. Check it out. So I might have to make sure that these get put in exactly the right spot, otherwise it won't activate. Or it can just be one of those slightly glitchy escape room puzzles where you gotta like tinker with it a little bit to make it work. But either way, success! Hi, my name is James and this is my electronics workbench. Together we host Workbench Wednesdays. It is a show where I review electronics tools and equipment. Whether you are on a hobbyist budget or trying to equip a professional workstation, we've got you covered. 
Look for new episodes on Wednesdays and come connect with me at element14.com slash workbench Wednesdays. I had a problem when designing the catch for inside the box to catch the shaft of the solenoid. So normally, uh, if the catch is down and the lid is closed, then this is encapsulated. But uh, since this is a squared off end, if this was extended and the box lid came down, it would just hit it. So what I need is something more like this door catch where it's rounded on one side and flat. So the flat catches, but the round allows it to kind of push into place. So I got this bolt that's the same size uh, diameter as my shaft, and I'm gonna try to cut it down and machine it to be like my door catch. Time to assemble my circuit and I've decided I'm going to put it in an Altoids tin for safekeeping. Now I have three things that need to plug into my board. My power, which has a barrel jack, my bay of reed switches, which is in my nicely channeled out piece of wood, and the solenoid, which is going to be in the metal cash box. Now I wanted to have different plugs for each one. The power already has a barrel jack. Uh, I'm just going to use a simple, ooh, where'd it go? Uh, wire to board connector for the relays. Um, since my solenoid needs nine volts and I might want to be able to just like turn on really quick because otherwise I won't be able to open the box if it's engaged. So I've decided to just use a nine volt battery snap as the connector for my solenoid. So I'm gonna have one of those on the side of my tin. Uh, something I really need to consider is the fact that this is really shallow and I need to be able to plug in my power from the outside. So I have to be careful about where I locate this on the board and I need to keep the bottom solder joints as low profile as possible so that I can keep this as low on the Altoids tin as possible. And I should probably line the bottom of my Altoids tin so I don't accidentally make any shorts with all this metal contacting the metal of the inside of my Altoids tin. Okay. Do that. So there's this episode of Gilmore Girls where Lorelai is borrowing Luke's truck and she doesn't know how to drive a stick shift. And so he drove her a diagram and she comes back in with the sticky note with how it works. And she goes, nothing's where it's supposed to be. And he flips it upside down. This isn't an aerial view. It's an underneath view. I wired it wrong. Time to do it again. Yeah. All right, it's all done. I've got my solenoid box. I've got my board containing my three reed switches, 
and I've got my circuit in my Altoids tin to make them work together. So now I just have to plug these all together and then set it up to look like a proper escape room puzzle. this project turned out pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, it will never actually be tested in a real escape room, so I won't know whether it's going to be robust or if any problems would occur after long-term use. Uh, so as far as I'm concerned, it was a success! Um, I had a ton of fun building this puzzle, and I would love to build more puzzles, so if you have ideas for other escape room puzzles or just some kind of electronic puzzle, I would love to hear about it. Please post about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash presents. See you next time.